Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and back there is Cindy Oliver and she's a dog. About a month ago, I made a video looking at how grifters were misrepresenting excess death statistics to falsely claim that vaccines were resulting in excess mortality. In that video, I showed that the death rate was in fact higher in the unvaccinated than in the vaccinated, even when we were only looking at non-COVID deaths. And just to be clear, when I say unvaccinated, I mean people who have not received any COVID vaccinations. I do not mean people who received a vaccine in the last 14 days. They were counted as vaccinated in the data that I showed. In that video, I also looked at possible causes for the increase in mortality, and they included increases in mortality after people had recovered from COVID, as well as the strains on the healthcare system in the UK. Since then, there has been some additional reports out of both Singapore and Australia that shed further light on the issue. Some of these reports are being ignored by the grifters and some of them are being misrepresented. So in this video, we will have a look at them. But first I'd like to explain why we can get different insights from reports from these two countries compared with data from the UK and the USA. Both Singapore and Australia adopted policies of minimising COVID infections until everyone who wanted to be vaccinated could get vaccinated. This means that although both countries are now seeing COVID deaths as restrictions have eased, the overall death rate from COVID is substantially lower than in countries who weren't successful in minimising COVID prior to vaccination, as you can see in this graph. You will also notice from the graph that Singapore is doing quite a bit better than Australia in minimising COVID mortality. That's most likely owing to the fact that they are continuing to take COVID more seriously than is the case now in Australia. And of course, in addition to a lot less people dying from COVID in Australia and Singapore than in a lot of other countries, there are also a lot less people who got COVID while unvaccinated. So anyway, let's have a look at the reports. This is a report from Singapore. It's entitled Singapore Report on Excess Mortality During the COVID-19 Pandemic Up to June 2022. And it was prepared by the Ministry of Health in Singapore. The first thing they did in the report was they converted the crude death rate to an age standardised death rate. This is important as Singapore's population is ageing, which means that increases in mortality are expected. So you need to adjust the numbers to account for this. After taking this into account, there were 2,490 excess deaths during the COVID-19 pandemic from January 2020 to June 22. The official COVID death toll during the same period was 1,403, which is about 60% of the excess deaths. So what was the cause of the other 40%? They considered a few things, and I'll just read out what the report says. Our immediate reason is that some excess deaths not attributable to a documented COVID-19 infection could partly reflect undiagnosed COVID-19. Further, COVID-19 may have also changed health behaviours and health-seeking behaviours of the population. For example, putting off health screening and medication for chronic illnesses. And this may have contributed to some of the excess deaths. However, further analysis showed that most were actually the after effects of COVID infection. And again, I'll read from the report. The likely and more significant explanation is death due to underlying health, sorry, underlying medical conditions, but made worse by COVID-19 infections. The gap between official death toll and estimated excess deaths 
can be explained by deaths in patients recently infected with COVID-19 in the past 90 days. In a secondary analysis of persons without recent infection, no additional excess deaths were found. And it is well known that viral infections can aggregate pre-existing conditions, thereby increasing mortality from other causes. So in other words, all excess mortality in Singapore since the pandemic began is either directly or indirectly caused by COVID-19. Unfortunately, Australia hasn't done the same analysis, so we can't say for sure that's the case here, but there is definitely some data that supports the Singapore findings. Australia has recently released two reports looking at mortality. This one here, which is a fairly detailed analysis of the causes of death in Australia in 2021, which is of course the year most people in Australia were vaccinated for COVID-19. And this one here, which is the provisional mortality analysis for June 2022. And I will be showing you data from both reports. This figure here shows the age standardised death rates for all-cause mortality by sex from 2012 to 2021. You can see that the rates are generally trending down, but there was a substantial dip in mortality in 2020. This is because the measures put in place to mitigate COVID also resulted in a decrease in most other types of death as well. And this is, of course, consistent with what we have just discussed about infections increasing deaths from other causes. One disturbing piece of information from the report is that the death rate for alcohol-induced mortality was at a 10-year high in 2021, and it is being driven mostly by males. Now, I expect a lot of people will assume that this is our response to the stress of the pandemic. However, if you read the commentary in the report, the deaths are primarily from chronic conditions like cirrhosis of the liver, which takes years to develop. So it's not directly pandemic related. The report also looked at suicides and drug related deaths, and both of these decreased during the pandemic. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of this video that grifters were misrepresenting some of the data. The data that people are misrepresenting is from this report here. Specifically, people are claiming that Australia has 17% excess mortality this year and suggesting that the vaccines are a major cause of this. One person who has done this recently is Dr. John Campbell using his usual nudge, nudge, wink, wink approach. What John and many others are ignoring is this important piece of information here. While this publication can provide an indication of where counts of deaths are above or below expectations, it does not provide official estimates of excess mortality. Using the number of deaths from the previous years as the predictor for the expected number of deaths does not take into account changes in population size and age structures of that population, as well as expected improvements in mortality rates over time. Now, I will shortly show you the age standardised rates, which paint quite a different picture. But before I do, there is some data in the raw numbers that directly disputes another anti-vaxxer lie. This is a common claim made by anti-vaxxers. So, many young people dying all of a sudden, and they don't want you to think it's the vaccine. This figure here shows deaths in January to June 2022 compared with the baseline average. As you can see, 
In the 0 to 44 age group, there is no increase in mortality in highly vaccinated Australia. And when I say highly vaccinated, 97.1% of people over 16 have received at least one COVID vaccine and 61.8% of children aged 5 to 15 also have. Now, the definition of young varies depending on who you are talking to. I personally think anyone younger than 57 is remarkably young, but generally under 40 is considered young. So the data from Australia directly contradicts the claims that young people are dying as a result of the vaccines. And if you would like to look further into why claims that vaccines are causing deaths in young people are ridiculous, I have made a video about it and I'll provide a link to this in the video's description. As I said though, these are raw numbers. They haven't been adjusted to account for population growth. The age standardised death rates are provided by month in an Excel spreadsheet which is way too complicated to show in a video. So what I've done is I've calculated the average monthly age standardised death rate to make it a bit easier to look at. And just so you know, I have done it the quick and dirty way by adding them up and dividing by six as opposed to weighting each month by the number of days in the month. So this is the average age standardised monthly death rate for January to June 2022 compared with the baseline average. The rate is per 100,000 and the numbers in brackets are the 95% confidence intervals. We can see that the age standardised death rate has increased from 35.503 to 38.345. And the confidence intervals don't overlap, so that increase is statistically significant. So what is causing the increase in deaths? Unsurprisingly, most of them are actually COVID deaths. The age standardised death rate for COVID deaths was 2.427 which accounts for 85% of excess mortality. As I said earlier, Australia didn't do the same analysis as Singapore. So we don't know how many deaths occurred in people who previously had COVID, but we do have some further information on the causes of the deaths. First, let's look at what causes of death haven't increased. Respiratory diseases, cancer, ischemic heart diseases and cerebrovascular diseases have all decreased compared with baseline, although the decreases are not statistically significant. These figures are quite enlightening though, because the ischemic heart disease code includes heart attacks and the cerebrovascular diseases code includes stroke. According to Dr. Malhotra, who I have discussed in a previous video, unexpected heart attack and stroke deaths should be considered vaccine related unless proven otherwise. Well, in highly vaccinated Australia, both have decreased. So Malhotra's unsubstantiated claims are simply bollocks. So are there any causes of death that have increased? Well, we've already discussed the increase in alcohol-related mortality, but there is a much larger cause of death that has also seen an increase. There has been a small increase in mortality from diabetes, but it is not statistically significant. There has, however, been a statistically significant increase in mortality from dementia. Is this increase in mortality from dementia concerning? Absolutely. Is it unexpected? Unfortunately, no.
This figure here shows the mortality trends for the five leading causes of death in Australia for the last 10 years. Dementia is the dark blue line, and as you can see, while the other causes of death have been trending down, dementia has been trending upwards. Part of the reason that dementia mortality is increasing is simply because as life expectancy increases, more people are living to an age where dementia is more likely. Age is the largest risk factor for dementia, but that doesn't mean dementia is inevitable. There are a number of things you can do to reduce your chances of getting dementia, including maintaining a healthy weight, exercising regularly, not smoking, and keeping alcohol consumption within the recommended limits. A lesser known behavior that affects dementia is vaccination. In this study, they looked at the effect of flu vaccination on subsequent diagnoses of Alzheimer's disease. They looked at vaccination behavior over a six year period and then followed up for another four years after that. All participants were at least 65 years old at the start of the follow-up period, which means they were at least 59 at the beginning of the study. And what they found was people who received at least one flu vaccine were 40% less likely than their non-vaccinated peers to develop Alzheimer's disease during the four-year follow-up period. That's the flu vaccine, but what about the COVID vaccine? Well, to the best of my knowledge, there aren't any studies published yet looking at this. But there are some studies looking at the effect of getting COVID when unvaccinated on dementia. This study looked at long-term neurologic outcomes following COVID using a database of over 11 million people from the US Department of Veterans Affairs. They looked at people who tested positive for SARS-CoV-2 between the 1st of March 2020 and the 15th of January 2021. So they would be primarily unvaccinated. They found there was a 70%, 77% increase risk for memory disorders and more than double the risk for Alzheimer's disease. And the increases in risk were seen for both people under 65 and over 65. So despite what grifters are saying, there is no evidence that excess mortality is related to vaccinations, but considerable evidence from Singapore and Australia that it is in fact related to COVID. And sadly, this is likely to continue. It is important to note, however, that there have been some vaccine associated deaths. In Australia, these are investigated by the TGA. And there have been 14 deaths associated with COVID vaccines, 13 with the AstraZeneca vaccine and one with the Moderna vaccine. Although the one following Moderna vaccination is still under investigation by the coroner as there were some complicating factors. Every one of these deaths is tragic as is every death caused by COVID. Grifters attempting to inflate numbers through misrepresentation of data make it harder for the people who have genuinely suffered loss from vaccines because it risks them being lumped in with the fake numbers and not being taken seriously when they should be. If you'd like to look further into the data that I've presented, I provided links in the video's description. And please remember this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak with your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And even if you've left a nasty comment, you've still helped me because the algorithm doesn't know it's a nasty comment. They just love to see interaction.
And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee. I really appreciate your support. I will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future. So if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.